Hi there, this is Steve with another Photoshop tutorial. In this video we're going to talk about how to use the transform controls to resize an object. This was a recent question in my Photoshop course on Udemy, so I wanted to give an answer here. So let's dive into this example and I'll kind of show you the setup I have to show you how to do this. Um, we have this cappuccino mug on a brown background and I have two layers in this image. The, there's the background layer, which is basically what you see here, and then there's this layer one, which is a copy of just the cappuccino mug. So that's the object that we're going to resize, and if I hide the background, you'll see what I mean. So it's just that cappuccino mug that's cut out, and I can grab that and move it around. Okay, So I'm going to show you how to resize that. And the way that you do that is you make sure you're selected on the layer that you want, and then you press Control and the letter T. And on a Mac, that's going to be Command T. And you'll notice it brings up this box. And actually, let me re show this again, just so it's a little easier to see. So, sorry, let me do that again. Control T. Now you see the transform controls around the image and you'll notice that my cursor becomes an arrow and I can click on this and I can drag it around move it wherever I want let's just bring it up here a little bit and then you'll notice too that you can hover over these and it gives you these little moving arrows and different versions of Photoshop they've alternated basically whether you can click and drag and it will maintain your proportions or whether you have to push shift and click and drag um, and it's a little actually infuriating how often they change it from version to version but you basically just have to what I do is just click on it start to drag and then if it's not staying proportional then let go, hit control Z, and then try the other option, which in this case would be to hold the shift key and click and drag. But you'll notice the shift key doesn't keep it proportional. It doesn't keep the height and width proportional. So if you come in too far, it'll smash it. If you come out too far, it'll stretch it. You obviously don't want that to happen. So that's when you'd release, hit control Z to make it go back to its normal shape and then use the other method which in this case is just to click and drag in this version that I have which is the newest version of Photoshop CC. So anyway when you click there then you can then change the size of your image, resize your image essentially or that object and so if I wanted to make a little mini cappuccino mug stacked on top of this other cappuccino mug which you know whatever or or hovering inside it maybe whatever this isn't something you would actually probably do but this is just an example so you can see how to do that um, that's how you would resize it then if you for some reason decide you don't like it that way again you can usually use control Z or you can go up here and just click this little Ghostbuster symbol which is the undo or cancel button click that and it will just go back to the same original size that it was but if you want to keep that resizing, then you want to go ahead and over here and click on that. But let me show you one quick warning when you're resizing stuff like this. If I bring this all the way down, like right, let's go really small, like that. And then I go ahead and say, yep, that's the size I want. I want it right there. And I say, okay. Okay, got this tiny little mug now. That has basically locked that into this layer. It's locked that size change into this layer. Okay. Now if I go Control T again to transform it and I scale it back up because I'm like, oh, I want it to be the original size again. Look what happens. It's really pixelated. And the reason is when I scaled it way down, Photoshop basically threw away a bunch of extra pixels because it was like, well, you only want it to be this small, so we only need to keep this many pixels to match the size. And then it remembers it when I click this button. So then when I drag it back up here, it still remembers that it got rid of all those pixels, and this is what you have left. So the moral of that story is, if you don't want to degrade your images, don't shrink them down, save them, and then expand them again.
okay? And that's fairly easy to do. One of the ways to do that is if you shrink it down, or if you're gonna shrink it down, make a copy of the layer before you do that. So you preserve the original with the good pixels, and you can go ahead and shrink down the copy of it, and if you decide you don't want it later, then you can just take this one and throw it away, and then use the other one. And if you, you know, your other one you would just hide, you know. But that's one way. The other way is if you're playing around with something and then you just don't like it, then don't save it. Just close it, don't save it, open it back up, and you can start over. But that's starting over. It's better to just create extra layers, and then if you don't like it, you can delete it. Alternatively, which is a whole nother video, you could turn it into a smart object, and smart objects don't work the same. With smart objects, if you shrink this down and then expand it back out, Photoshop remembers all of the pixels that were in the original large version, and it saves them, and when you expand it back out, it preserves them. So that's a smart object, but again, that's a whole nother lecture. But what you need to remember for this video is Control or Command T, That'll give you your transform controls, and then you can go in there and do things. One thing I didn't tell you, by the way, is if you hover out over the edge, out past the corner, you see these little curved arrows. You can click then and grab it and rotate it as well. And it'll show you the degrees of rotation that you have. You can also go up here and set the rotation. So if I want to go 90 degrees, it'll rotate it exactly 90 degrees. So you can be a little bit more precise that way. Okay, I hope that was helpful in learning how to use the transform controls and shrink or expand your objects or images. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you'll like the video, subscribe to the channel, check out my course in the description below if you want to learn a ton more, and keep watching. Thanks so much.